Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. This brain dead, tone deaf idiot is wearing a fucking Rolex hat while telling his viewers that streaming is harder than a nine to five. Also, he has a Bernie Sanders poster in the background, so there's some interesting contradictions there. Uh -huh. So. Welcome to my new show here on Everything is Gay called Jealous Rage, the show where I complain about people doing better than me because I feel they are undeserving of their success. Today's target, none other than Hassan Piker. This guy blew up! Get it? Um, I'm making a terrorist joke. The dude blew up on Twitch, okay, as like the socialist king. But let's dig a little deeper in his success and see why it's riddled with hypocrisy. So who is Hassan Piker? Because if you're watching my content right now, you probably don't watch his, but you've probably heard of him. Mr. Piker is a political commentator, a streamer, he's very big on Twitch, and he's a self-identified socialist. Now, Hassan really first gained his notoriety working for for the Young Turks. Now, I'm sure many of you guys have heard of the Young Turks here online. It's a very progressive, very obnoxious online news show. And we can't mention the Young Turks without also bringing up the frontman and founder of that organization, Cenk Uger, who happens to be Hassan Piker's uncle. Interesting. It's almost like to get successful in the media industry, you either have to know someone or know someone. I don't know which one Hassan did in this case. You be the judge. Fuck. <laughs> Known for his fiery takes and controversial opinions and his very long live streams, he has been known to live stream from 8 to 10 hours a day. Hassan's content is mostly a mix of political commentary, social commentary, reactions of very topical current events. But Hassan's rise hasn't come without its fair share of questions and controversies. Often walking the line between being a staunch advocate for socialism, all while enjoying a very, very capitalist lifestyle. For instance, back in 2021, I believe, Hassan made headlines for purchasing about a $2.7 million house in West Hollywood. Also, here's a little bit of trivia for you. West Hollywood actually has one of the largest and most concentrated populations of homosexual males in the United States. I'm not necessarily making any connections here with Hassan Piker, but again, you be the judge. Fuck. But a very prominent, self-described socialist in a multi-million dollar mansion in one of the most expensive cities in the United States? That's a little bit of a contradiction, don't you think? I mean, he himself preaches about wealth distribution and he rallies against the capitalist tycoons. Yet he is sitting comfortably, very comfortably, again, in one of the most expensive cities in the United States. Also happens to be very, very gay. The city does. Not necessarily Hassan, but it's it's interesting that he chose to buy a house there. Fuck. Now, even some of his fellow leftists have turned on him for this because they're like, hey, it's unethical to be profiting off of socialist content. It just so happens that Los Angeles, where West Hollywood is, also has one of the highest homelessness populations ever. So imagine that you're here in LA walking around, nothing but trash and homeless gay dudes just walking around like zombies being like, dick, dick. I need dick. And then like up on the hill with a castle uh, and golden gates and fucking, I don't know, chandeliers and fountains of champagne. There's Hassan and his toad of an uncle being like, ah, I hate Jews. Speaking of his uncle, let's talk about how Hassan even got here in the first place. Hassan's career didn't start from scratch. As I mentioned earlier, he got his break working for his uncle's network, the Young Turks. Many people have brought up this blatant nepotism because while many streamers grind for years to get even a fraction of Hassan's viewership, Hassan essentially got a head start just by kind of riding off his uncle's coattails. And it's really not hard when you think about the viewership that watches the Young Turks. By definition, they are watching that content because they are brain-dead sheeple that don't want to think for themselves. So, 
when his uncle, Chink, is like, Hey, you guys should... Oh, God, I'm sweating so much. I look like a fucking toad. Uh, did I mention that I look like a fucking fat toad? Anyway, this is my nephew. You should follow him. He's also a socialist. But give him your money because uh, you just... You got to. Ribbit, ribbit. I'm a fucking toad. So, of course, all those people are going to be like, Oh, yeah, I'm just going to do what this fat toad tells me to do. You know, it's funny. Like, just as a little tangent, like, Alex Jones gets made fun of for being like, Oh, you're turning the frogs gay. Blah, blah, blah. Like, when people talk about frogs, they think about Alex Jones. But when I think about frogs, I think of Chank Uger. Chank Uger. However you want to pronounce his fucking name. That stupid, sweaty, fat, red-faced Bitch. Now, I've been very clear with my message in this video, if you couldn't tell. You know, I have some main talking points. I'm jealous of Hassan. I think his uncle looks like a fucking toad. And West Hollywood is gay. But Hassan hasn't been so clear with his messaging. I mean, his whole platform is about, you know, fighting capitalism. Yet he's actively benefiting from it. He has this wild quote where he's like, Who gives a shit about the house, Mena? Who fucking cares? These guys are so stupid. Like, I make... I make like, you know, a uh, tenure doctor or like, you know, law firm partner money, okay? Which is a lot. It, it's, it's so tone deaf to be bragging about how much money you make, all while talking about how capitalism is terrible, and then also claiming, oh, you know, I'm not as rich as people think. Uh, he downplays his earnings during his streams. But as all good things must come to an end, unfortunately, Hassan is seeing a decline in viewership. Now, Hassan does remain as one of the largest political commentators on Twitch, but his numbers aren't nearly as consistent as they used to be. Now, his viewership really peaked during the 2020 election cycle because, of course, that was just volatile as fuck. Now we're seeing his average viewer count fluctuate by large margins. Several sources have pointed out that he used to average around 32,000 viewers, but this has dropped to around 20,000 or less in recent months. Now, again, I don't watch his streams, so I don't have all current data. Uh, I'm just going by what I can find online. But when you see this inconsistent messaging, his tone deaf statements talking about how wealthy he is, how much money he makes, but also he's not as rich as you think, but also I make doctor or lawyer partner money, but also capitalism is bad and we have to redistribute the wealth. Maybe some of his viewers have kind of grown brains and realized that none of this makes sense and his bit is getting old. So okay, now that we know who Hassan is and kind of what he he believes in, I want to go over some of the controversial statements he's made in the past, and if those sources earlier were accurate and the numbers are true, these may have contributed to his overall decline in viewership. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. Now, this is just a wild statement to make, not only because it's incredibly disrespectful, but what do you mean America deserved 9-11? America did 9-11, bro. I'm only partially joking about that, by the way. You know, it's, it's funny to make, like, Bush did 9-11 jokes, but I was never a 9-11 truther until I did research for a podcast based around 9-11 trutherism and uh, oopsies it kind of swayed my opinion a little bit but regardless of uh, any of that it's just a really weird statement to make that America deserved 9-11 another hilarious quote from Hassan is he told Dan Crenshaw you should have just shut the fuck up and lost your eye in a better way, referring to the Republican congressman and former Navy SEAL. Now, I'm not a fan of Dan Crenshaw either, okay? I think he's one of these neocon rhinos. Uh, I think he's potentially crooked. You look at his stock portfolio, and he, let's see, his current portfolio is outperforming the market up to 110%. This is from six months ago, okay, that data. So it's interesting how regardless of what political, you know, affiliation you are, when you join Congress, all of a sudden, man, you're just a freaking savvy investor. Man, I want, I want some of that information, you know? Like, if I had the information they had, I'd be making the decisions they'd make, and I'd be raking it in. Uh, but if I did that type of stuff with my own business, that would be called insider trading, and I would go to fucking prison. He's saying, this is what liberation struggle looks like. Beheading babies, burning families alive, solidarity and victory to the Palestinian people. This is pro-Hamas. This man is supporting Hamas. 
This dude just called babies militants. No, I, I understand. And there are baby settlers as well. But there are baby settlers as well. There are babies in the settlements. There are baby settlers as well. That's right, in October 2023, while discussing the Hamas-Israeli conflict on the H3 podcast with Ethan Klein, another fucking idiot, Hassan referred to baby settlers when justifying the killing of Israeli infants. Now, regardless of which side you're on when it comes to the Palestine-Israel conflict, we can all agree that beheading and burning babies in ovens is not okay, regardless of where those babies come from. But, of course, Hassan is fine with it when it's Israeli babies. This is not a surprising stance for Hassan, though, because, again, he said that America deserved 9-11. So listen, guys, at the end of the day, Hassan Piker is human, and I get that. And also, you know, I'm on camera for a living, obviously not on the same scale as Hassan. That's kind of the whole point of the series. I'm just very jealous of what he's been able to accomplish. But, like, I digress. The human human in me wants to assume that if you record for as long as he has, you're bound to pick up some bad takes on that mic. I mean, you're putting in 9, 10 hour days. Yeah, you're bound to say some bullshit, some stupid fucking things once in a while. Now, it's magnified in Hassan's case because, you know, he takes very hard stances on very controversial topics and, uh, you know, the foundation on which he's built his fame and his notoriety and his wealth, you know, socialism, uh, redistribution of wealth, it's not really in line with how he lives his life. You know, buying a $2.7 million mansion in Los Angeles, bragging on stream about how much money he he makes and you know the potential nepotism is just kind of icky so there you have it for those of you who didn't know hassan piker is undoubtedly undeniably successful but is he deserving of that success man that's such a socialist question hassan if you're watching this you should appreciate this. I'm trying to talk to you in ways you understand. But then again, you're more of a capitalist than me. I mean, pff, dude, you're buying $2.7 million mansions in gay town. Like, that should, that should be me. I run everything is gay. I am the gay lord. So guys, stick around for more jealous rage where I continue to break down why people like Hassan are undeserving of their success, why they're overrated, overpaid, and why it should be me. Only here on Everything is Gay. And as I say, either way, everything is gay. Have a good day.